Um, I'm working at the ZBW, the Leibniz Information Center for Economics, which is located in Kiel and Hamburg in Germany. I have to admit that I'm not able to present a complete picture uh, of research data and economics in 10 minutes. Um, for this reason, I will focus more or less on the case of data sharing. Does it work? Yes. Fine. Um, first, I will try to give you an idea about what is research data and economics, and then I present some results of recently published empirical studies concerning the issue of data sharing. Based on these findings, I will discuss some proposals to overcome the barriers of data sharing, and last but not least, uh, we will have time for discussion. Well, probably not. We will see. <laughs> ah, okay. Just to give you an idea and not meant as a complete overview, we can distinguish research data in respect of their origin. The raw data for economic research can come from statistical agencies or international organizations like OECD or others, or from surveys or from the public administration or from commercial databases and so on. Built upon these data, the researchers in economic create their own data sets and run their analysis. More important in respect to data sharing is to differentiate between macro and micro data. Macro data are aggregated data, that is, for example, the number of all persons in a country with or without a job. These data are often freely available at the internet, so objectively there seems to be no reason why not to share this data when a researcher used them in a study. Micro data, on the other hand, are data about people, households and films, which are not or only weakly anonymized. For reasons of privacy or confidentiality, these data are protected and cannot be shared with others. These data are not freely available at the internet and in Germany, for example, as a researcher and only for research purposes, you can get the data as a visiting scientist on site or wire controlled data teleprocessing but you're definitely not allowed to further share this data, and I think for good reasons. But what, 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 <laughs> but what does this distinction between macro and micro data mean for sharing economic research data? I agree with the open economic principle, which inter alia states that research data and economics should be open by default. But we have to accept that in some cases, for reasons of privacy and or confidentiality, the data cannot be made openly available. In such cases, researchers should share the analysis under the least restrictive term consistent with the legal requirements. And this should include opening up non-sensitive data, summary data, metadata, and code. Again, this background. What is the state of data sharing in economics? Well, there seems to be an easy answer to this question. The status quo in empirical research in economics and management is not to share data. As you, key on this, as you can see on the slide in Andrioli Fersbach and Müller Langer's sample, 82 out of 488 empirical researchers sporadically share data, while only 12 share data in a comprehensive and clear way. The large majority, around about 80%, neither share data nor provide any indication of whether or where the data is available. Despite the fact that open research data is supported by funding agencies, by an increasing number of academic journals, and even by researchers themselves, open access to data seems to be an ideal professed but not practiced. I think it's worthwhile to mention that Andrew Juli Fersbach and Müller Langer find strong empirical support that voluntary data sharing increases with A, academic tenure, B, the chair of published papers to of papers subject to a mandatory data disclosure policy of journals and see personal attitudes towards open science. Furthermore, what we can observe is a discrepancy between the expected benefit for scientific progress and the individual researcher's behavior. In an online survey, Fächer, Friesiger, Hebing, Linnig and Sauermann ask about the general perceptions and the individual implementation among the researchers in their sample with a group of questions on opinions on data sharing and the individual sharing experience. As you can see on the slide, most respondents, approximately 76%, agree that other researchers should publish their data, and around 83% state that making data available to other researchers benefits scientific progress. On the other hand, across all disciplines, not only in economics, only 35% of the researchers say 
that it is common in their research community to share data, and more respondents say that it's not. Well, after having heard these statistics, I think we should be careful not to jump to conclusions. From my point of view, it's important to be very precise with the term data sharing. One important question is with whom a researcher is willing to share his data. So let us have a brief view on different stages or modes of data sharing. Um, the Knowledge Exchange Report, Sowing the Seed, Van den Eiden and Bistrop distinguish between private management, collaborative sharing, peer exchange, transparent governance, community sharing and public sharing. Public sharing is only one mode of sharing and probably not the most important one. In the survey from Fächer, 72% of the respondents replied that they would share with researchers whom they know personally. But only 32% said that they would be willing to share data publicly. So most researchers would make data available if they could decide on the scope and modalities of the data reuse. Who can access what kind of data, how and when. I guess we should have this in mind when discussing research data policies, fundamentals and incentives. Well, to sum up the empirical results, it seems that researchers widely agree that it is beneficial for scientific progress to share data and that they agree that others should publish their data. However, only a minority of researchers actually share their data publicly. There's a discrepancy between the expected benefit for scientific progress and the individual researcher's behavior. Fecker et al. put it in a nutshell. Academia is a reputation economy, an exchange system that is driven by individual reputation beyond money and status. In this regard, data sharing will only see widespread adoption among researchers if it pays off in the form of reputation. This brings us directly to the incentives. If it's true, and I believe it is, that the lack of formal recognition is the main barrier of making data available, then we need appropriate reward structures for data sharing and have to provide easy and ready to use technical infrastructure. So tools and services are already available, like for example the data site DOIs or repositories for research data like Zenodo or Dataverse or Fixture and others. Another promising way to foster formal recognition of data sharing are data journals. In some disciplines, data journals are already a reality, but in economic, you will hardly find one. In a recently held workshop about the future of scholarly communication, Oselo and Fry said that intrinsic motivation is the key to foster open research data, open access, and open science. To some extent, I agree, because at the end of the day, data sharing is about trust and credibility. The bad news is uh, that we hardly can operationalize intrinsic motivation into concrete measures. So, data sharing is not an end in itself. The purpose of data sharing is to enable the reuse of data on the one hand and verification or falsification of scientific results on the other hand. Do you trust in economic results? Dewald attempted to replicate 54 papers and could replicate only two. McCulloch tried to replicate 69 papers and could replicate 14. And the same author attempted to replicate 117 articles from another journal and could only replicate nine. Oh. No doubt, replication is the cornerstone of science, and it really is bad news that no applied economic journal can demonstrate that the results published in papers are replicable. I can't say that there's nothing left to say, however, this is the end of my presentation. Now I'm looking forward to the discussion. Just to give you a stimulus, on this slide are the 50 shades of no, or more precisely, 56 excuses not to share your data. <laughs> and, I, and of course, I hope you will never use them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for sharing this information, interesting results. Um, any comments or questions to the last two presentations, which seem to, well, to confirm the, the, the somehow surprising or maybe not, <laughs> I have a comment to the first presentation, to the chemistry department results. Uh, I have this feeling that, uh, I don't know, but uh, it is possible 
that there are some databases for chemical um, structures and things where some scientists have maybe submitted something during their life, but they do not think that this is data sharing because this is something that has been in the community for so many years that they don't know that this is what you should call data sharing. They just have to submit structures if they solve them. That's, that's part of the research. They don't know they are doing something new because it's not new in a very, very specific place. So it's possible that some of these answers were not really uh, correct. I don't think that that about economics. I don't know. But. Yes, go ahead. I would have a, a question to a uh, representative of Leibniz Information Central. Yes, uh, uh, there is a lot of data in, uh, in governmental organizations responsible for social security. I mean, uh, like in Poland, we have ZUS, which is uh, the, uh, the organization which is responsible for social security. Uh, uh, social security, pension, pensions, and so on. And there is a lot of data which is not easily accessible to the uh, research community. Uh, and uh, there is a big challenge for, uh, for the whole uh, European uh, Union, uh, for the countries, to harmonize the uh, social uh, uh, security schemes and without knowing, the, uh, let's say, what is really in the data. Uh, any, any policies cannot be the effective policies can, cannot be developed. And uh, uh, what's your view on accessing such uh, data? Detailed data, they can be anonymized or pseudonymized, but uh, uh, let's say uh, getting into much more detail and developing much more uh, detailed models for addressing social security social policy in the EU? Well, that's a difficult question because I never think about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe I should. Um, we have in Germany different in data archives or, or research data centers for, for some disciplines and, and no, not for some discipline, for, for economic, social sciences and behavioral economic, the German Data Forum, which is a member and affiliate of the RDA. And under their umbrella, a lot of um, data archives are available, so they can, you can accept these data, but um, I, I don't know how the situation is with the governmental data, especially if they are secure. Okay, more questions? Um, yeah, uh, well, this is more a comment. I, I was wondering a, a little bit about the, the privacy issue that you mentioned, and when, when our, an economic report is in, uses private data, but also is used later to, to, I don't know, like take important des political decisions in a country or whatever, um, Okay, privacy is important, but then um, if it's used for something like that, would, uh, does privacy matter that much? Because, I mean, for instance, um, one of the reports that was used to take a lot of um, decisions in Spain was later um, uh, was later found out that was not correct. The economic report, uh, the, the reports were were used on data that was not cor um, measured correctly. So I wanted to know your opinion about that. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Uh, if you aggregate the data and anonymize the data, then you can share it. So the problem, sure. Uh, it wasn't really meant for, for microdata, which are not um, anonymized. But this, this data are very interesting for, for economists because um, they can work very interesting things with it. And they, will, they do it, but they, they can't further share it because they first have to aggregate the data. 